If you guys are looking for any cheap and reliable coins, check out MMOPO.com. Use the code PINGU at checkout to get 8% off. You guys welcome to Season 2, Episode number 5 of the Derby Current Live. And to start with this episode, we do currently have the highest scorer in the league with 5 goals on Episode number 5. Um, it is Cabral, of course. Really, really good start to the season. And um, yeah, it's good to see that the signing did pay off and um, it was worth putting like all of our eggs in one basket in a way. Um, Vasquez with a couple of assists and Fernandinho with an assist. A really nice assist actually against um, West Ham in the previous episode of course. Um, we don't have any clean sheets yet and that might, I don't know if it will even happen this season because it has been super, super difficult um, in most of the games. We do have Brighton to kick off this episode who are um, a few places below us but still a very good team of course. If you look at it in one way, run the same points as Man United so are we really doing that badly? Probably not. Um, so I think I think the the loss um, against West Ham away from home. At the end of the day, most of our points are going to come at home, and you know if we can get a few points away, then that's great. Um, so yeah, Brighton are currently in the relegation zone with three points, only one win from their first five games, and um, yeah, in between the two episodes, I was just having a look at like our actual transfer business. Um, if I can actually remember where to look for that. Um, so obviously we brought in um, Cabral for, call it 25 million. Obviously, if we kept Jack Marriott at the club anyway, he wouldn't be playing. So um, he's a nice player and a really good player, but I think it was worth doing it for this deal because Cabral's doing really well so far. Needed a new goalkeeper because obviously Foster's um, quite old now and has actually gone down a rating. So um, Ramsdale was required and 17 millions, maybe slightly over the price that I should have paid, but still a very good young goalkeeper. Um, then we got Max Lowe for 7.6 million. Needed a left back, and that that ticks that job off. Um, sold item for 230k. Uh, brought Capaldo on a free, and then loaned him out. So that was a good bit of business. And then Fernandinho and Vasquez on free. Um, I don't know. What, what would you say the best signing of the track? Like, I'm tempted to say one of these two, just because they're free, and you know we're not had to pay anything for him. Like Vasquez could easily sell for like 15, 20 million. Um, but some of the bigger transfers, obviously, uh, Verratti going to Barcelona, Richarlison to Bayern Munich, um, Joe Gomez to Piemonte Calcio, um, which is Juventus, of course. Um, Jimenez to Dortmund for 75 million is a lot. Um, Deli Alli to Man United. Mainly just looking for the Premier League ones. Uh, Thomas Muller to Thomas Muller for 50 million at 32. That that is a I don't know. It just wouldn't happen really. Like, Muller's just a one-club player. It's, it's, I'm sure there's a rule... I don't know if it's because I... I think the rule is, if I'm trying to sign someone like Thomas Muller, the game won't let me, but because it's the AI, they can do whatever they want. Um, Naki Williams also going to Everton. Um, just have a quick look through these. Coutinho to Wolves, which, in a way, kind of makes sense. Um, it's quite a realistic signing in a way. So yeah, in between the two episodes I've um, slightly changed the 4-2-3-1 to the 4-2-3-1 narrow um, which hopefully will help us both going forwards and defensively. It just means the defence is a bit more narrow and um, it means the wingers can get a little bit more involved such as Joswak. Um, I'm not too sure why Fernandinho's got a plus 7 but everyone else has got like plus 6 and plus 5. Um, I don't know if it's because he's the captain. I don't know if the captain gets an extra plus. Let me know in the comment section down below. Um, yeah, between Ibe and um, Gray, the only reason I'm playing Ibe at the minute is because he's got the five-star skills and the five-star weak foot, and I uh, Gray's only got 4-4, four, four, so um, they're pretty similar. Obviously, the plus seven pace is the only real major difference between the two, um, and obviously bringing him off the bench just has that extra bit of impact. Um, I will actually put Sibley onto the bench um, and obviously we can get him in for Vasquez whenever need be. Um, eventually when we get enough points I'll obviously look to play a few more younger players but for the time being uh, we're going for the strongest possible lineup and uh, yeah let's go into the game against Brighton. Let's have a look at the Brighton team then for today's game. They are playing a 5-2-1-2 uh, with uh, Lamperty at uh, right wing back, Michaelenko at uh, left wing back, then Sensi, Sanessi, um, Ostergaard, Veltman and Matt Ryan goal, Demerbe and uh, Rudy in that uh, centre mid slot, then Percy Tau, 
um, Neil Morpai and uh, Macias, who I'm not too sure about. Percy tells an interesting one. I don't think he can actually play for Brighton in real life because of a um, work permit, but he gets loaned out literally every season, so it's, it's a bit of a funny one. Um, I think it was a similar situation with, uh, what's his face, Carl McAllister, the Argentinian. Chance here for Brighton in their all black kit. It does look really, really nice. Macias with a nice bit of skill, but can Fossi Munster. Fossi Munster's got that extra bit of pace than, like, about 20 more pace than Matt Clark has, and he's a bit more. I don't want to say physical, but he's more able to get the ball in a 50 50, if that makes sense. Chance here for Vasquez if he can find the gap in the Brighton defence. Can he get the finish, though? Yes, he can. He has made it 1 0 there in the first uh, half an hour of the game, and um, I wasn't too convinced when we saw it. Like, it was more a financial thing for Vasquez, but obviously he's a good player, 80 rated, and um, I don't know, it's sli ever so slightly unrealistic. But then again, Rod uh, Rodrigo went to lead, so simply with the ball into Cabral. Lays it off for Jason Knight. Can he get the finish, though? Good save from Matty Ryan. I think we will get probably De Lapon up top. Um, I think the fullback stamina is a bit of an issue, both of them having not the greatest in the world, um, but should be okay. Chance here for Can he get a clean throw on goal and get it 2-0? Oh, great save from Matty Ryan. More pie in the box here. Can he open this defence up? We've done quite well, but the last 10 minutes are much more difficult, as you can see. They do pull out all the skills now. There we go, full time against Brighton, a 1-0 victory. It's, I think it's our first 1-0 victory of the entire career mode. Um, very little happened in the game, I'm not going to lie to you. As you can see, we had three shots on target. They had two, not much possession, but we did well defensively. There we go, Tom Lawrence is back from uh, injury. It does mean we have to put him into training to get him back to uh, fitness, though. And there we go, we have sold David Marshall as well, so... That will go through in January, and uh, I don't know if the money gets added now. No, it doesn't. It, it goes in, I think, when we get to January. So, if we just go into these training sessions, um, and then maybe change one of the players to Tom Lawrence, then we should be able to get him back to fitness, which will be good to see. Um, I think we'll just take out Simula, and uh, still can't pick it. I, I don't quite understand how it works, then. Because it said in that message... Um, that you can do it, but apparently you can't. So, I'm not too sure what the game means when it says it can return to. You can now rejoin first team training sessions. So, why couldn't I put him in a training session? <laughs> Unless it has to be a light training session, maybe that's what it needs to be. But we do have a bit of uh, play development here to Vasquez, um, and he might actually grow a rating or two when we do this, or maybe not. Let's try and put Tom Lawrence into a uh, light training session. Um, I'll probably just switch this one to something that's light um, and then that way hopefully we can get him involved because that's what in my head what should happen uh, we'll take Shinny out hopefully Lawrence is available no he's not so I don't quite understand how this game works then so into the next game then it is an East Midlands derby against Leicester City it's not exactly a derby but um, the game may classify it I think it will actually classify it as a derby um, but Leicester don't actually have any rivals in real life. Weirdly, Vasquez has gone down a rating, um, and that was even before we converted him to a cam, so a little bit odd why, like, yo-yos. Um, but nevertheless, Max Lowe has actually grown to a 75, so that's good to see. Obviously, he's only 23, 24, um, so still has plenty of time to grow, which is great. Um, and also, Liam Delap has gone to a 71. Here we are then for a rainy day at... Um, the King Power Stadium against Leicester, of course. Looking at their team, they've got quite a few new signings. They're playing a 4-3-3. Uh, Schmeichel in goal, Justin and Ben Davies, a new signing, Kurt Zuma, uh, Benkovic and Didi, Madison and Tielemans. Harvey Barnes and uh, Under out on the right. And then uh, Morega up top, who's actually quite powerful and uh, pacey. So, yeah, there's no Jamie Vardy, so a bit of an icon has gone. Fernandini on the edge here, slips it into Cabral. Can he get the finish, though? Yes, he can in the first 10 minutes. Arta Cabral with the goal. And I think that's his sixth now of the season. And, um, yeah, he's brilliant, honestly. Like, I've not heard of him before. Um, I saw him on the game. And 
Yeah, really nice from Fernandinho. Just has that composure to uh, find the back of the net. Like, the laps, the laps good, but obviously Cabral's just that next level um, striker that we needed. Chance here for Leicester. Gone in with Fernandinho. Maybe shouldn't have. Um, and it's just a yellow. Free kick on the edge with Leicester. Oh, it's gone into the top corner. That's a top top quality free kick from James Madison to level the game up, and um, probably an unnecessary foul in a way. Um, I did jump the wall as well, but it was literally in the top corner. Nothing you can do. And to be honest, James uh, James Madison should probably um, have moved to a bigger club at this point of his career. Like, oh, don't tell me that's a late tap. Oh dear. I don't know how this is a second yellow, to be honest. Like, I think that's the only way to get red cards on this game. Barely touched him. Did I even touch him? Let's have a look. So here's the tackle for the second yellow. It's, it's, it's very soft. I know it's late, but... Now, we need to make a big change. Um, I think... What we'll probably have to do is go for something like that. And it's not the best of starts in a uh, Derby game to go down 30 minutes in, 25 minutes in, uh, down to 10 men. And Lucas Vasquez has to be the one to make way. Maybe it could have gone for Ibe, but um, yeah, a bit of a shame that he's had to go so early on. Chance here for Barnes, saved by Ramsdale, but the rebound goes straight to Morega. He does make it 2 1 there, and. Um, yeah, since going down to 10 men, it's been obviously very difficult, but, uh, yeah, yeah, poor from Gramsdale, really. I don't, I don't think he should be parrying the ball straight back to him, but, um, yeah, he might as well bring on Damari Gray against his former club, and um, could I could maybe go two striker. Chance here for Damari Gray. Can he score against his former club? He has got the pace. Has he got the finish? Oh, it's hit the post, and then it's gone out for a corner. Oh, that was so close. There we go, full-time against Leicester. It is a 2-1 loss, um, which is a shame because I think with um, 11 men, we probably would have won that game. Obviously, Fernandinho getting an assist and a, um, a red car in the game, but really close from Damari Gray at the end. I don't know. That's so, that's so unlucky as well that the defender... Didn't knock it in his own net as well. Learn to buy here for Cabango. Um, so apparently if you delegate and then just go for a loan, then that way it will work. Um, so we'll just do a one-year loan, I guess. Um, obviously at 66 rate, he's not great and probably a little bit too low, so loaning him out would be the best thing to do. Transfer off here for Scott Malone from uh, Guermer Guermeris. Um We may as well negotiate and get that extra 100,000, but it's kind of annoying that these deals are coming through literally as we leave the uh, transfer window and not when um, we are in it so if we can get an extra hundred thousand that just makes the deal a little bit better and there we go so yeah just obviously maybe could have gone to 1.5 million but uh, since he's a player that I'm not too fussed about um, yeah obviously getting rid of all these players now it will mean um, we can put this money towards um, players in January so yeah in terms of the signings we made this season we did we did make 10 so that should be plenty um, yeah next game is against Everton at home um, gonna have to change the defensive midfielder but uh, we have had a bit of downgrades to Rooney Shinny and I think somebody else got downgraded as well but I mentioned it before uh, Vasquez here we are then against Everton at home Hopefully we can uh, bounce back with a win after losing that last game. Obviously Bird coming into the uh, defensive midfield for the suspended Fernandinho. And um, yeah, they're playing a 4-3-3 with uh, Pickford in goal, Dingye and uh, Dumfries at fullback, Lindelof and Zagadou, Fabian Delft, Thomas Muller and uh, James Rodriguez as a midfield three, Kana Hoglu and uh, Gilfie Sigurdsson on the right, and then uh, Inaki Williams in the middle. Obviously Richarlison's gone to... Um, by Munich and uh, no Dominic Calvert Lewin. Good with the ball here into Vasquez, kind of slip it out to Jason Knight with the shot now into the back of the net, and we do make it 1 0 there in the first 10 minutes. Goal from Jason Knight, good to see, and um, 
He has actually grown to a 76 now, and Ramsdale went to a 78. So, yeah, it's really nice to see when players are growing. And uh, we seem to have a pretty good system at the minute in terms of getting points. Like, we're narrowly losing, like, 2-1 against um, Leicester in the last game, and then, I think, West Ham. But we're not, we're not getting beaten like we were first game of the season against uh, Burnley 5-0, which I don't quite understand what the difference is. Because I've not changed anything. I've not changed any sliders or anything. And it just seems to have got a bit easier. Right, with the ball here. Chance to uh, get it back into the middle to Vasquez. With the shot and with the goal, we do make it 2-0 there in the 15th minute. And... Uh, yeah, he's got the captain's armband for today. Um, I don't know if it makes any difference at all. Um, but, yeah, it's, I don't know. He's a bit of a funny one. Like, I wasn't... He wasn't, like, the standout signing that I thought that we needed. Um, obviously, it means that, like, Sibley, Lawrence and Rooney aren't getting as much game time. But he is he is quite good, Vasquez. So, he is helping the team a lot. Oh, is that... Oh, somehow I've not found him. And we're clean through here with... Arthur Cabral, can he make the finish though? Off the post and into the back of the net. We've made it 3 0 in the first 20 minutes against Everton. A very good team, of course, but um, it just seems a bit of a walk in the park at the minute. It's, it's, it's weird because it's like, I don't know. All right, easy. Bernard with the ball into the middle. Naki Williams with the shot, but a great save from Ramsdale actually um, to stop that goal. As you can see, it was going into that near post. All right to Ibe. Chance to whip it into the middle. If Cabral can get his head on it. Yes, he does. And there we go. We have made it 4-0 in the 32nd minute. And um, could be a potential chance to get his first hat-trick for the club. Everton defensively just really poor. And um, it is actually the 4-3-3 that we did use against Burnley. And we lost 5-0. So I guess that formation just isn't very good. Chance to get Ibe in. He has got it. Josrex there at the back post. Can I... Slip it over to him and make it 5-0. There we go. There's the five of the game in the first half. And this is really easy. Um, and we've got quite a few points this season already as well. Um, but we do need to finish mid-table. So on on the flip side, like when we're playing like Chelsea, Man United and Man City, we're probably not going to get points. So I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Oh, it's on the ball here. Nice to see him back from his injury. Can he get a goal? On his return with his left foot, yes he can. And there's 6-0 in the uh, 55th minute. Good to see Tom Lawrence still has his uh, ability. And yeah, he's a nice impact sub option we have. Um, maybe maybe I could put him on like the right-hand side um, of the three. But we'll have to wait and see. Chance here for Sibley into the lap. Can he lay in? Jason Knight, yes he can. Can we make it 7-0? Yes we can. And... Jordan Pickford literally cannot save anything. Um, kind of shows how good Nick Pope is. When, when we played Burnley, it was a 5-0 um, loss. But against Everton, he gets a hand to it, which is not enough. And uh, seven. Chance here for Ibe. Good ball from Knight into the lap. And we make it 8-0. And uh, I don't know. It's, it's not actually that unrealistic when you actually look at the uh, Everton team basically they've got um, the back four then Delph and then Rodriguez and Muller are literally doing nothing Chanelogu and Sigurdsson have no pace out wide and Anaki Williams is literally it so it's like it's like they're playing without four players um, you know so it may, it may look it may look very unrealistic but that team that Everton have put out is very beatable um, when you really break it down but it was a nice ball across from Ibe to uh, get Liam Delap his first Premier League goal of the season obviously he's not going to play as much this season which is a bit of a shame um, but obviously Cabral's doing really well at the minute so I can't really complain simply with the ball here can we make it 9-0 and record that Leicester win yes we can there we go that goes into the top right hand corner and uh, we've levelled the Leicester Southampton game from um, I think it was l literally this time last year when we were recording the video so crazy how long ago that does actually feel but um, can we make it 10 can we get t double figures chance here for Williams to 
I really would have liked to kept the clean sheet and actually leveled that 9-0 uh, that Leicester did get, but uh, as you can see, they did pull something out in the last second, and uh, there you go, there's full time pretty much in about two seconds. There we go. So, ridiculous, but as I explained, not that ridiculous when you look at the midfield, basically the midfield of um, Everton was one man, and it was Fabian Delph, literally. And when when you're playing against just Delph, um, it's kind of, it's kind of easy to get around. So obviously we didn't have Fernandinho on that last game, so kind of shows how um, even without him we're still doing very well indeed. Two year loan here for um, Roden from Villarreal. Um, I think a two year loan's I don't know. The thing is with Roden is he's almost usable. Um, He's at a point where it's not really worth loaning him out. But at the same time, maybe it's good to get one or two out just so we've got the numbers. Um, let's try and negotiate it because obviously the wages are in the loan deal as well. Um, so if we can maybe just go for a one year, then that would be probably better. They're going for a two. Can we get a short term? There we go. We've got a short term. So that will go from January till the end of the season. Um... So let's go for that, and hopefully, there we go. So that's sorted for them. You know, I am re-signing Roden. Uh, Cabango potentially going to... Um oh, yeah, both the players need to accept the whether they want to move, basically, in the deal. Um, but, yeah, when you, when you really break it down, that last game, 9-1 does look ridiculous. But, as I explained, it, it was so easy just to get through them because they had no midfield um, but I have basically just gone through a load of the free agents and had a look at anyone with anything really um, in terms of stats as you can see Barry Douglas here wouldn't be the worst of options not the best physically though like really poor physically actually 53 strength isn't the greatest um, and basically just seeing if there's anything worth picking up and it's probably not the case um, we do have Fabrizio here. Fabrizio. Um, he's a not bad backup goalkeeper, to be fair. Jack Rodwell there as well. Um, I don't know, do we bring him in? Just to, It's probably not worth doing, is it? Because his wages will be a bit and he's not exactly going to play anyway. But, uh, yeah, I think basically if we get like about 40 injuries, then maybe... We'll look to bring in a free agent, but there's plenty of squad depth at the minute, so there's no requirement. At the minute, we are ninth in the table, eight games played, 12 points. We have one more point than Man United, so I think I think we're doing all right at the minute. Um, and I might need to look to change the uh, sliders. So there we go, Cabango has accepted that, um, I think. I've accepted the proposed terms. Has the player agreed at that? Because I don't think he'll move yet. And we do have a loan with an option to buy here for Ida. Um, which I don't really want a loan to option to buy. So we'll delegate just a loan. And we'll go a short term. Hopefully. I think that's why. Yeah, because we delegated that. that yeah, so we need to see now. Um, whether the player does want to move to uh, St. Etienne. So Odin is going to Villarreal. Um... So he won't go till January, and then he'll go till the end of the season. So that that will be something I have to remember. Obviously, I can always recall him if he is required, but I'd much rather players get out and play some football, and we just have three, maybe four centre backs. In theory, like if we kept Clark, Fernandinho, Fossi Manso, and Bielik, we'll be all right. Um, because I doubt at the minute we've got. Um, I think at the minute we've got Roden going out and Cabango. So we still have um, Adara, Bayayo and Buchanan could technically play centre-back and Brown. So I think I think we're perfectly fine at the minute for um, centre-back options. So we're going to finish off this episode here. Next episode does kick off with the Leeds game, who will currently have one point after eight games. So should be able to absolutely obliterate Leeds in that next uh episode we're doing really well and i might need to look to the problem is if i raise the sliders when we come against actual good teams um 
it it won't it won't be very fun. Um, but as you can see, we're not. I don't know. We're like winning one, losing one, aren't we? At the minute, if we go from the start of the season, lost against Burnley, won against Southampton, lost Spurs, lost against Norwich, lost uh, won against Wolves. Um, so it's about at the right level. Obviously, I'll get better throughout the season as well once I've embedded all the new players. But I think I'll probably leave the difficulty as it is until um, until December. I think I think we'll leave it until then because we've got the three games against very easy teams, um, which we should win. Then we've got Crystal Palace, and then we've got Chelsea and Arsenal, and we can kind of assess the difficulty there. Um, because at the minute, you know, the objective is to finish mid-table, and I don't, I don't want us to get sacked, you know, if we don't hit our objectives, basically. So, I do need to look to, um, I will do that in the next episode, probably, look to play some of the Youth Academy players, um, in 10 games this season, just so I can tick that one off. It's, it's really annoying, but it, it is what it is. Um, we do need to get a three clean sheet away streak this season somehow. I don't know how I'm going to do that, but I'll have to try. Um, but yeah, like when we're at home, it's easy. And when we're away, it's difficult. And that's that's how it should be. So I don't I don't think the score lines are that unrealistic, really. Like I think that Wolves game at Molyneux away from home probably would have been a loss. Obviously, we lost 5-0 against Burnley at home. Um, but all in all, most of the time when we play away... Like, the, the Everton game's a bit of a blip, if anything. So we'll, we'll wait and see in the next episode. Maybe Leeds will beat us to kick off the next episode. And um, it is actually more difficult against the teams towards the bottom of the table. That's what I find, anyway. If, if you play a team in the relegation zone, it's like playing a team that's top of the league. Um, but we haven't played Manchester City or Liverpool yet. And we don't actually play those until very late on, indeed. Um... We don't play City until the 23rd of December um, and Liverpool until the 4th of December. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite a bit of a time until we do get properly tested. I do actually want to check. Yeah, we do end the season very tough indeed with Arsenal, Chelsea and Manchester City. So, yeah, hopefully you guys did enjoy this uh, fifth episode of the Derby Current Live. And, uh, yeah, make sure you do leave a like, Crane, if you are enjoying the series. And see you soon. Bye.